welcome to the Norman News Service. Up next, we have an interview with the Teacher of the Year, a movie review of Beverly Hills Cop 2, all Norman news and sports, coming up next when Brandy and I return in just 60 seconds. members have approved the final teaching cuts for next year, bringing the total number eliminated to 22. This is the first time in the school's histories that teachers have to be laid off. According to board member Fred Stern, the board regrets having to make the cuts, but believes this may happen every year from now on. This is because there is no visibility of funds coming in to prevent this. Brandy. Anti-drug crusader David Toma will return to Beverly on Friday, May 29th as a follow-up to his March 31st appearance. Toma's return is part of the efforts being made by the high school and the Maple Center to increase the long-term effects of his appearance. At Toma's last visit, he gave a speech on drugs and alcohol to the entire student body and all interested parents. Approximately 86% of these parents said Toma had an excellent impact on their child. Tasha? The forensics crew stormed onto the state debate finals in San Diego and wound up in good shape as Robert Rich placed fifth in the Lincoln-Douglas debate. Rich, Rich, by placing fifth, was the highest placed junior in the state in LD, an all-around top finisher for the Western Bay Forensics League. Junior Sean Eskovitz was the other debater to place at state. He finished 16th in extemporaneous speaking out of a field of 49. The objective now is for the team to do well at national finals, which will be held in Cincinnati in late June. Four members of the team managed to qualify for chances to speak at the nation's most prestigious tournament. Rich will compete in extemp along with senior Stephen Fisher. Eskovitz, along with senior Matt Levinson, will compete in Lincoln Douglas. By competing at nationals, senior competitors may have to miss their graduation ceremonies, as well as several senior activities. And now let's go to Colin Yost with his Eye on the City. Thanks, Tasha. Justices on the state Supreme Court refused to review the constitutionality of the Beverly Hills smoking ban on Wednesday, May 20th. The Beverly Hills Restaurant Association requested the review with the hope of bypassing the lower appellate courts and getting an early decision. Attorney Vincent Waldman, a representative of the Restaurant Association, said that the smoking ordinance has caused severe economic losses to restaurant owners. In some cases, owners are claiming to have lost up to one-third of their pre-no smoking ban profits. Owners, the owners aren't the only ones who are losing money. Waitresses and waiters in Beverly Hills restaurants say that they have experienced severe drops in tips. Waitresses at Nate and Al's have lost up to 30 to 40 percent of their tip money, and Alan Jacobs, a, a waiter at the Ragoon Racket Club, ra um, reports, reports that a $100 a week tip drop has happened. Even though both workers and owners have complained about the ordinance, the city still insists that the public health is more important. Tasha? Thank you, Colin. The Board of Education meeting on Tuesday, May 12th, accepted a donation of $57,000 from the community. They approved a preliminary budget and laid off six teachers. The donation was presented by Anna Lee Roth, Judy Fenton, and Alan Bunnage. The donation represents 200 families who voluntarily donated money to help reduce cuts in the school budget. John Scogg, an assistant superintendent, presented a preliminary budget which totals $25 million. Walter Puffer, also a su superintendent, announced the layoff of six teachers. He stated in order for the school budget to be balanced, the layoffs were necessary. Brandy. Coming upon graduation, seniors may discover that they could possibly be qualified to graduate with honors. Among possibilities is a possible seal bearer 
from the California Scholarship Federation. Seniors are qualified under three categories, potential sealed bearer, definite sealed bearer, or potential life member. The Scholars Program is also being offered to seniors who have completed three years of math, lab science, or English with a grade C or better. 1987 marks the first year the scholarship is being offered. Finally, seniors have the possibility of graduating with potential honors by having at least six members on the honor roll. Students need at least a 3.1 GPA to qualify for that honor roll. The Golden State exams will be administered Wednesday, May 27th and Thursday, May 28th. These tests are established to identify honors level achievement by individual students in specific academic subjects covered by the Golden State exam. They will be administered at each school year's end as finals are. However, participation in this program is voluntary. GSEs in first year algebra and geometry will be given this year. Exams are being developed for mathematic courses, American history, lab sciences, English literature, composition, foreign languages, and health sciences. Students who excel on these exams will, re will receive a certificate from the Superintendent of Public Instruction acknowledging their achievement. In addition, they will receive an honors insignia on their diploma and a notation on their transcript. Tasha? Nine acts ranging from singing, dancing to comedy have been chosen for the talent show at the Senior Breakfast. The breakfast will be held on June 17th at 8 o'clock at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. 23 acts, which were auditioned last Tuesday, May 19th, will perform at the 45-minute show. Judges were Chairman Joe Rosen, Co-Chairman Michelle Gold, Master of Ceremonies Stephen Foonberg, and History Teacher William Logue. And now let's turn to Gita Amar and her interview with Adrian Ball, Teacher of the Year. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you, Mr. Ball, for coming in. Congratulations on winning Teacher of the Year. Thank you very much. Can you tell us, do you have any special teaching techniques that you use with your students? Well. <laughs> Over the years, I guess, uh, I have a laboratory manual that the students use that I've written and also have some panel discussions that uh, I get the students involved to make the class a little more interesting on appropriate topics of the day. Mm -hmm. And I also have the uh, students do a lot of the diagrammings of the different systems on the board to more or less review and all these diagrams will be on test um. and things of that sort. Over the years, you've taught a lots of students, and Correct. you've seen changes. What are particular changes that you've seen in the students? Well, you know, as I was just sitting here, one of the girls I've seen on television I had in class in biology years ago, mm -hmm. that was Laura Ornest. Are you familiar with Laura Ornest? She's mm -hmm. on Channel 7 sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, she's one of them. But uh, a number of the, in the performing arts, with Bonnie Franklin, and uh, some of you have heard of her, yeah. and Richard Dreyfuss. Really? And he was, you know, just like uh, both of them were just very fine students, but there were a number of them, Danny Thomas and uh, Tony Thomas, and just a number of very fine young people coming through uh, the school at that time. But what you don't realize at that time, there's a few years later down the road when they make their mark, just as you people are doing right here. And that's when the students will say, did you know them, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, but at that time, they were just another student, you know what I mean, yeah. participating in the class. Do you still have a rapport with some of the students who graduate? Uh, I do hear from them. They come back occasionally with uh, 10 years later, and they're married and have a couple children of their own. <laughs> I've had a number of students do that, and uh, 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 quite a few, actually. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll get a note from them, and even uh, s some of the principals will be out somewhere, and they'll say, is Mr. Bow still around that place, or yeah. still there, or whatever? And tell them to say hi, and that would be quite a long time ago. What are your interests outside of school? Well, one of my major interests uh, is music, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I write music. I have my own small publishing company, small record production company. Mm -hmm. I do usually three or four uh, records a year, and I publish other people's music of the, of the demos they sent to me. And then I hire out uh, musicians, of which I know quite a few of mm -hmm. them in the area. And then I rent out also a studio, and then I test market the, uh, the record and see how it does. And actually, it really has helped uh, in a lifestyle uh -huh. other than teaching in terms of supplementing my income, to be very honest with yeah. you. In other words, it's helped a great deal. And uh, it's made teaching uh, less frustrating for me because I'm not totally dependent financially on teaching. And so that is always uh, makes it a lot easier. I noticed you had a Disneyland watch yeah, with Mickey Mouse like on it, and you have an interest in Disneyland, I understand? Well, I'd like to have an interest, like but you said, <laughs> but uh, no, I, 
I enjoy going down to Disneyland all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife and I, we go down there to dance. It's great exercise. We go down there about, oh, 60, 70 times a year. That we, often? We have an annual pass, actually, and we go down there usually every Saturday night. Now, if uh -huh. we're not down there, we're usually in Yosemite. Oh, which really? we have a house up there and enjoy uh -huh. very much. Oh, that's nice. And so that's another part of the lifestyle we enjoy. So it's a lot of fun and it's of my exercise. When you see anyone jog, if you notice, they're in pain. <laughs> Dancing's fun. You're dancing with the one you love, and so you <laughs> have a lot of fun that way. What kind, of, what kind of music does your record company put what out? What I consider commercial. Does mm -hmm. a nine-year-old to an 18-year-old go out to purchase it? Mm -hmm. So last year, for example, I published Chili Bones, which happened to be a country western, mm -hmm. and Love on the Lamb, which is a single. And uh, I've done other uh, songs uh, such as Tiger Paws. So it's actually soft rock, none of this hard punk stuff. I, I, if you hear enough of it, it begins to sound very much alike. Mm -hmm. So I have a hard time handling that. But I, my own like for music are ballads, but they don't do quite as well unless they come through a, a movie and so forth. What have you enjoyed most about teaching? About teaching? The, the, the uh, people I work with, they help keep you mentally alert. You're working with young people. Uh, it's, uh, you look through life through the uh, minds of a young person, not from an older person my age. In other words, uh, that's how you maintain, I think, your youth. When I go to Disneyland, I look at it as a person who's never been there before, every mm -hmm. time I go. And when I meet young people each year, a new crop of young people, uh -huh. I look at it through their eyes, and I'm there aware and what they need to uh, Hopefully, uh, the information they, uh, that I part to them, hopefully, physiology. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate it. Now, back to more Norman News. Enjoy it. Thank you, Mr. Fowl. Thank you, Gita. The Little Theater has been transformed into an 18th century opera house as the spring musical Amadeus debuted last Thursday, May 21st. The play stars seniors Jason Tamark and Salieri and Travis Vine in the title role of Wolfgang Amadeus Mo Mozart. Junior Marley Moscatel co-stars as Constanzi Weber, Mozart's wife. The cast and crew felt the opening weekend to be a success and are looking forwarded forward to this week's performances. Amadeus continues its run Wednesday through Friday this week at 8 o'clock. For further ticket information, contact the Theater Arts Hotline at 201-0884. Randy. As the school year comes to a close, senior activities continue on Friday, June 12th. The seniors will participate in Grad Night at Disneyland. According to ASB President Eric Feigenbaum, they have sold approximately 200 tickets so far. Tickets continue to be on sale until Friday, May 29th. Feigenbaum commented that the ticket sales are better than they had expected. They cost $27 and may be purchased in the student store. All those attending must wear formal attire. 100 Years of Hollywood is the theme for Beverly's annual senior prom. Scheduled for Saturday, May 30th, the gala, gala event, which will be held in the International Ballroom of the Beverly Hilton Hotel, lasts from 7.30 to 12 a.m. In accordance with the glitzy theme, the winners of the senior polls will be announced during the evening, and the winners will be presented with Oscar trophies. Although many prom bids have already been sold, they will be on sale until Wednesday, May 27th for $115 in the student store. Tasha? Senior wills, awards, and class history are just few of the things that will be featured in this year's annual senior edition of Highlights. The 16-page magazine is traditionally given out to all seniors the week of graduation. It is published by all senior members of the high school newspaper staff. Co-editors this year are Alyssa Tabora and Stephen Lotwin. Awards feature in the featured in the magazine include the Hall of Fame, Athletes of the Year, and Outstanding Scholar Athlete. And now let's turn over to Melissa Roth and Brad Brooks with Norman Sports. Thank you, Tasha. The varsity baseball team season ended in La Puente on Friday, May 22nd. Beverly was beaten 16-5 in the first round of the CIF playoffs by the number three team of the CIF Southern Section, Bishop of Mott. The Normans jumped out to a 5 to nothing lead led by Billy Koch's three-run triple, but Bishop Amat exploded for 11 runs at the bottom of the second. Beverly didn't help themselves much by walking eight batters and committing several errors. The Norman bats were then shut down as Bishop Amat went on to score five more runs to seal the victory. Beverly was not the only Ocean League team to fare poorly in the playoffs as first place Santa Monica and second place Culver City went on to lose the first round. The Normans are everything but disappointed with their season as they are satisfied with being, making it to CIF for the first time in three years. 
The first place golf team led the regionals with an overall score of 389. The par 389 was the lowest score among the 30 schools competing. Both David Weber and Kerry Meadow do dominated their opponents with the lowest score of 76. Los Altos was in second place, seven shots behind Beverly. The CIF finals are at Industry Hills on Tuesday, May 26. Brad. The varsity track team track team participated in the CIF preliminaries on Saturday, May 16th at Gar High School in Cerritos. To qualify for the prelims, the track members had to finish in the top three of their event in the league finals. Of all the qualifiers, only top varsity members John Mora, Tommy Harp, and Michelle Thompson advanced to the CIF finals. Both Harp and Mora came up with their personal best times in the 1600 meters with times of 4 minutes, 22 seconds, and 4 minutes, 18 seconds, respectively. The CIF Finals were held on Saturday, May 23rd at Cerritos College. Mora finished 7th out of 9 places as Harp came in 8th in the 1600 meters. Time now for another in-depth look at the Norman sports world with Sean Hendler, who's here now with varsity tennis coach Jason Newman. Thank you, Brad. Coach, you guys, you guys have had a very successful season so far. What can you attribute the success to? Well, I think three things. One, we we're fortunate to have a number of people back from last year's team who were experienced. Two, I think that the team had a very good work ethic this year. Uh, they were willing to put in the long hours of practice that you need to uh, achieve the success that we've had thus far. And thirdly, we were fortunate to have Donnie Isaac, a senior, transfer in from Iowa this year. And he is has a national ranking and he's led our team. Right. Coach Ken Seaton and Danny Roberts in doubles and Donnie Isaac in singles have been pretty devastating throughout the Ocean League play. How, how has that contributed to the team? How has that helped? Well, wh anytime you have Ken Seaton, a team like Ken Seaton and Danny Roberts who have not lost a set this entire season, uh, it enables you to keep them as a stopper more or less and you know that at some point they're going to beat the other team's best opponents. Uh, same thing with Donnie. Uh, they, uh, you can count on six points from them any time they go into a tennis match. I mentioned Danny and Ken are undefeated this season so far. Right. Now, this Thursday you play Santa Barbara in the CIS semifinals. And Santa Barbara was the team that knocked you out last year. What are you doing differently? How are you approaching this match? Well, I don't think that we're going to do anything differently. Hopefully, we'll be able to compete with them a little bit better than we did last year. We played them earlier this year, and we tied them in sets 9-9. Nine to nine. However, we did lose on games 83-77. Uh, uh, since that time, we have Michael Roberts playing again, who had earlier fractured a bone in his wrist. And with him playing and with everybody remembering what mm -hmm. happened last year at this time, right. uh, hopefully that will serve as uh, inspiration enough to pull us through. Okay, with, with uh, Michael back, are we 100%? And if so, just how far do you think this team can go? Well, we'd like to go another two matches. That would put us in the CIF finals against University High School. Um, it's hard to say. It's going to be a very competitive match. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to come down to probably the last set. All right, well, Coach Jason Newman, the head coach of the varsity tennis team, has been our guest. Coach, good luck in the playoffs. And I want everyone there this Thursday at 2 o'clock on our home court against Santa Barbara. Now back to more Norman sports. The boys' varsity tennis team advanced one step farther in the CIF playoffs by beating Corona Del Mar 14-4 last Friday, May 22nd. Corona Del Mar posed no real threat for the netters, besides their number one player, Michael Briggs, who swept all three sets. Briggs handed Beverly's Donnie Isaac his own, only his fourth loss of the season by winning 6-3. The doubles team of Ken Seaton and Danny Roberts once again dominated their competition while not letting up a set. Seaton and Roberts are also still participating in the individual doubles competition, which will be played next Saturday, next Friday, May 29th. The tennis team will now be pitted against Santa Barbara, as you just heard, in the CIF semifinals at Beverly on Thursday, May 28th. They have already lost to Santa Barbara earlier in the season. That's a look at Norman Sports for this week. Now back to Brandy with more Norman News. Thank you, Brad. Over 50 elementary school students came to Beverly last Friday in order to participate in the annual ASB Leadership Conference and Breakfast. These eighth graders involved in leadership at the elementary school level were given breakfast at 8 a.m. in the cafeteria. ASB members conducted seminars on academics, high school benefits, co-curricular activities, and social pressures. Finally, the students viewed a film dealing with high school days. 
Senior Class President Evan Silver said that the conference helped the 8th graders get accustomed to the high school. He added that the step to high school is a big one and ASB wants to alleviate the fears and misconceptions that these students may have. Tasha? $500 was awarded to the winners of the annual Senior Art Contest. Sora Shin received $300 for her entries, which won first prize. Keiko Takahashi and Ann Young Tin Chu tied for second place, each winning $75. Sandra Lee and Stephanie Kabatsu shared third place, receiving $25 each. Honorable mentions went to John Barry and Mako Kamatsuna. Beverly Hills Cop 2 opened last week, and Carol Karimi is here to give us her review. Thanks, Tasha. As summer rolls around, movie audiences are beginning to get a taste of what they should expect as far as films go. In fact, one of the summer's sure hits has just been released. The movie promises to be a smash because of its star, who is regarded as one of today's top comedians. The film to which I'm referring to is Beverly Hills Cop 2. The star, Eddie Murphy. Beverly Hills Cop 2 is a sequel to the enormously successful Beverly Hills Cop. A strong indication for Part 2's expected success, success was its opening intake of over $4 million. So Axel Foley is back to entertain and confuse audiences again. But this time around, he's set up in style. After his triumph over an evil Beverly Hills drug merchant in Part 1, Foley is promoted to a top undercover agent, something like a Detroit Don Johnson in formal wear. Axel discovers that his good friend from Beverly Hills Police Department was shot in connection with a series of violent robberies known as the Alphabet Crimes. As a result, the old team of Rosewood and Taggart, played by Judge Reinhold and John Ashton and Murphy, reunite to decipher the clues and solve the crime. As the three investigate, begin to investigate the case, they meet up with the perpetrator of the crime, crime, Carla, played by Brigitte Nelson. Let's take a look at a scene from the movie. Here we find Murphy and his fellow friends investigating. Every now and then, an occasional long shot pays off. This is Dent's accountant, Sidney Bernstein. Anything that Dent's into, he's going to have a record of it, right? So we just go visit him. That's all we got to go on. Now check this thing out and see if Sidney Bernstein owns a car. Give me a pen. Oh, come on, actually. Give me a pen. 86 Mercedes, license number CRL507. Somebody want wait? Yeah, well, oh, 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 come right in. Sir, we're at the Beverly Hills Police Department. Are you Mr. Sidney Bernstein? Yes, lucky guess. Well, sir, you have 25 unpaid parking tickets. We have a warrant for your arrest. Tw 25? What 25? You what? have 25 unpaid parking tickets, sir? I, I, I pay my tickets. I pay, I pay all my tickets. Sir, do you own a black Mercedes-Benz license plate number CRL 507? 507? That's my wife's car. That's not my car. That's you my have 25 unpaid yeah, parking I mean, tickets. It's under my name, but it's my wife's car. No, no, no. Bitch! Well, sir, you have 25 unpaid parking tickets and it's your car, so we have to take you in. Wait a second, I've got an idea. Is there something that I have in this office that I could hand to you and that would make you kind of forget that you're holding those uh, little pink tickets there? Oh, you mean like if I had um, $200 in this hand? Ouch, let go of my arm, $200! Ouch, please, I'm robbing you. That's what I'm doing. Here's one, here's two, they're real crisp. Well, now that you think yes. about this, Mr. Bernstein. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use your uh, computer because I have to wipe all, all evidence of this transaction out, you know. A lot of people have been saying that if you like Eddie Murphy, you'll like the film. But this is really a good point because the movie offers everything its predecessor did, comparable scenes and monologues, though this one has more action. Murphy is without a doubt charismatic and can maneuver himself out of just about anything. So because Beverly Hills Cop 2 features a number of scenes with Murphy doing his usual characterizations and your basic improvisation, the film holds true to the norm of Eddie Murphy movies. The movie does offer entertainment, though thanks to its star and, vis and visually, thanks to its star and visually, it's very fast and direct thanks to Top Gun editing and camera work. I, however, did become preoccupied with identifying all the locations shot in Beverly Hills. You know, ladies and gentlemen, not all those scenes that were supposed to be in the modest hometown of ours were really there. <laughs> so on the normal scale of 1 to 10, 10 being best, Beverly Hills Cop 2 gets a 7. Tasha? 
Thank you, Carol. The College Success Seminar, a seminar for high school students, will be offered by UCLA Extension the weekend of June 27th and 28th. The seminar is designed to teach high school students specific study skills, techniques, and habits to succeed in today's college environment. The seminar involves a multimedia format that includes overhead projection, live and taped instruction, practice sessions, and an extensive series of printed materials. Topics include management, note-taking, term papers, exams, test anxiety, and test-taking techniques. The seminar will start at 9 in the morning and go until 4.30. For more information, call 825-4192. Randy. Starting June 23rd, the UCLA Extension will offer a new course for high school students entitled The World of Movies. Led by the founding father of the UCLA Film Archives, Bob Epstein, screenings will include films such as Citizen Kane, starred and directed by Orson Welles, and You Can't Take It With You, a film directed by Frank Capra, starring Jimmy Stewart. Participants seeking one-half elective for high school credit will write an essay after each session. The 12-session class will meet Tuesdays and Thursdays through August 5th from 2 to 5 p.m. at the NPI Auditorium. The fee for the course is $35 for students and $75 for the general public. For further information, contact John Watson of UCLA at 825-9064. And now we'll go to a special report on drunk driving with Melissa Roth. Melissa? Thank you, Brandy. Someone will be killed in Beverly Hills or Los Angeles in a drunk driving accident today. He may be the intoxicated driver or the innocent victim. You may know him or he may be your closest friend. Whatever the case, he will probably perish with the belief that it cannot happen to him. Drunk driving is the leading cause of death and injuries among teenagers. 26,000 Americans die in alcohol-related crashes each year. 70 dead every day, one life ended by a drunk driver every 23 minutes. Approximately one-third of those killed each year range from 16-year-olds to 24-year-olds. Young people especially are at fault. 44% of the fatal alcohol-related crashes that occur at night are caused by 16 to 24-year-olds. Yet this group accounts for only 22% of the licensed drivers. Driver education teacher Jack Gifford cannot convince students never to drink and drive. He believes, however, that Beverly students are very aware of the consequences of drunk driving. It has been determined that two drinks in an hour will make anyone an unsafe driver, and it takes the body approximately one hour to get rid of each drink. With the senior prom next Saturday, May 30th, steps have been taken to prevent drunk driving. Arrive Alive, a nonprofit organization, sent letters last week to their seniors and their parents. The letter asked parents to refrain from serving alcohol at the pre-prom parties. In addition, Arrive Alive has written letters to the local limousine companies requesting that there not be alcohol in the cars on prom night. A parent-student agreement was included in the letter. Each would have promised the other to find safe transportation home if ever in a drinking and driving situation. Safe Rides functions every Saturday and Friday night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. On prom night, Safe Rides will be receiving calls from 10 p.m. to 6 in the morning. This is the second year that Safe Rides has been active for the prom. President of Arrive Alive, Carolyn Goldberg, claimed that last year the program was beneficial and necessary. Approximately 20 calls were received from Beverly students. The number for Safe Rides is A-R-A-L-I-V-E, A-R Alive. If you can't do anything about acid rain, taxes, the budget, or inflation, you can do something about drunk driving. Brandy. Thank you, Melissa. Both freshman and sophomore classes are now trying to foster class unity. A softball game has been arranged by the leadership of both classes so that those in the classes of 89 and 90 will be able to identify with their own years. The date they meet on the diamond is Friday, May 29th at 345. Sign-ups for this event are at the textbook room during lunch until the day of the event. Rhoda Himmel's freshman honors ancient history classes took the annual, annual trip to the John Paul Getty Museum in Malibu. Students viewed sculptures, paintings, crafts, and various other forms of art after, after the museum tour. The students spent the remainder of the day at the beach. Well, that's it for this week's edition of the Norman News Service. Tune in next week when Jennifer Kaufman and Eric Maman bring you all next week's campus and city news. Till then, goodbye from the Norman News Service.